Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. So, Obi Clone, he wanted me to do a comparative video between Marquez versus Pacquiao, the third and fourth fights, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Marquez. Um, I don't mind doing that study right now in this breakdown. I'm going to freeze this video for a second. This is the third fight. And I'm also going to include Timothy Bradley versus Juan Manuel Marquez. I'm going to focus mostly on Marquez, of course, as the common denominator and how you fight him. Um, let me say a couple things. Juan Manuel Marquez is a natural Bernstein trained boxer. Uh, the same natural Bernstein who trained El Finito Lopez. Now, first and foremost, you got to understand something. Marquez is not the fastest boxer out there. He's not the quickest foot movement out there. The thing that makes Juan Manuel Marquez great is his counter-punching ability. Alright, so let's see if we can demonstrate that right there. Now he throws a jab to gauge distance, so does Pacquiao. And now he jabs and hits Pacquiao in the head, meaning that Marquez knew the distance he was supposed to hit Pacquiao at. Okay? Again, this is the mark of a great counter-puncher. Now he knows Pacquiao is going to try and get him back. So he's waiting for him. And Marquez therefore doesn't have to move that much in the ring. Because Marquez doesn't move that much at all. Notice he has the high guard defense. His vulnerability is right here. The problem with this defense is it protects and guards the chin and the head very well. So any hooks or any uh, punches like that, it will guard it very well. If you come straight up the middle, they close up the guard or he twists to the side so that the, the guard will protect him. But he's always vulnerable to the body. Okay. Uh, some other flaws in this defense, but remember Marcus is not the most mobile guy. Notice his stance is not extremely wide. He has a relatively small stance versus Pacquiao's stance, which is much wider. And as such, uh, Marquez, at least in this particular stance, cannot pivot as nicely and as well as he would like to. There are a couple other things about this style that I need to talk about. When Marquez throws an uppercut, he does not guard his chin. And so he's open for a left jab or a, a, uh, a left jab if you are a right-handed opponent and the left lead. And so he can get knocked down and he's been knocked down a couple times because of that. Okay. So um, having said that, and this, these are the flaws in the style. Remember Marcus is not the quickest guy in the world. You have to understand, therefore, that if you get into his counter-punching range, so Marquez, what he does is he tricks you into getting into his counter-punching range so he can counter-punch you, okay? He sets you up for a counter-punch, and he's very, very dangerous. He has great, great boxing knowledge, but once you get inside of a certain range with him, he knows the range very well, and it's indicated by the tip of his foot. He knows once you get past that point, no matter where you are, he can counter-punch you. Okay? Alright, so let's get into Juan Manuel Marquez. Now you know somewhat about his style. Now he has a dance partner, Manny Pacquiao. And the major problem with Manny Pacquiao that you will see is that Manny Pacquiao, he has a great judge of distance and everything, but because he's so engaging, he stays within a certain range to be counterpunched. That's what makes Pacquiao a good dance partner for Marquez. Pacquiao goes into the risky zone and he tries to slip and counter and use his defense, but he knows better than that that the risk factor increases, especially with a counter puncher like Marquez. It increases exponentially every time you enter into that zone. So let's go watch at Pacquiao versus Marquez. This is the third fight, and then I'm going to look at the fourth. We're comparing across the board round number six. So you're going to see round number six throughout this thing. So here it is. Marquez throws a jab, he's gauging distance, and then he hits Pacquiao to the stomach. Pacquiao's going to try and reply, Marquez puts a jab to make sure that he stays away. Again, Marquez is, there he goes again, pops Pacquiao, Pacquiao hits Marquez, Pacquiao comes in again to the zone, and he, he get, loses balance, he's coming in a little too recklessly, and Marquez is a guy you don't do that to. Marquez pops him with an uppercut, sneaks into his zone. Here's Marquez again, he slaps him to the with a, a blow to his stomach area. Notice not much foot movement by Marquez. Basically stays one place. Pacquiao pops him. Marquez counters him as he's moving away in evasive action. It's because Pacquiao stays too much in the zone of Marquez, his strike zone. 
He doesn't get out of the strike zone. There it is again. Pacquiao tries to throw a shot. You see, he stays in the strike zone. So he gets countered by Marquez with a straight right. He hits Marquez with his looping right, right hook. But Mark, he stays too long in the strike zone. Marquez hits him with a, st a, sh a stomach shot while he's hitting Marquez with a stomach shot. You see what I'm saying? He's too close in the strike zone. See, Marquez, there he is again. He's not there yet. Look at the feet. Catches Marquez, tries again. Marquez is, uh, goes around him, tries to hit him. Watch the feet if you can. Marquez is in strike zone again. Pacquiao is still in that strike zone. Now he's moved away. Marquez is waiting to counter him. Unfortunately, you can't see their feet to see how close they are to each other. Pacquiao hits him with a lead left. You'll see the feet now, I hope. Because he's right in the strike zone. Marquez is using his jab to keep Pacquiao at bay. Please show me the feet. Guess we won't see the feet. I wanted you to see it, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, anyway, the thing about it is Pacquiao is right now on the periphery of that strike zone. There goes, there goes Marquez with two straight lead uh, rights that hit Pacquiao because Pacquiao stays too long in his strike zone. Same thing happened in this fight. This is the fourth fight between them. This is the sixth round. As you know, the sixth round, Marquez knocked out Pacquiao. Why? Pacquiao lingered in the, in the high-risk strike zone against a counterpuncher. You just don't do those things. So here's Marquez. Watch their feet, how close they are. You'll see how close they are. Right now, they're far away. Pacquiao's way outside. Okay? Now, Pacquiao, his style is such that he inches towards you. See Pacquiao's inching towards Marquez? Just look at his feet. He's on the outside, but he's inching. They both miss, but he was in the strike zone. He's going to try again. There he is with the straight left. He's in the strike zone, so Marquez catches him 1-2. Of course, he has the high guard defense to protect himself from Marquez. They are far away. Marquez slips. Watch their feet. Pacquiao is trying to inch in on the outside. He catches him with a beautiful right hook. Marquez ties him up. All right. I can't stay too long on this, so I'm just going to leave that alone. You can always go and look at the sixth round on your own time. But here's the thing. They're far away right now. Pacquiao catches him with a little jab. Marquez in the strike zone. There you go. Catches him again with that uppercut. So Marquez knows Pacquiao stays. He stands. He doesn't, he doesn't respect distance. When Marquez is coming in, he's not leaping back. Now let me show you what happens with Timothy Bradley. Watch how Timothy Bradley respects distance. So here's the sixth round again, like I said. It's Timothy Bradley. See, he leaps in and out, in and out. Bradley counters. He moves out. Marquez is countering him because once you get in a certain strike zone with Marquez, you're more than likely going to get hit. Here's Bradley sneaking up. He uses the jab to find his range. Push Marquez back a little bit, but that's not really, really what's happening. Marquez is setting up to counter him. Throws the jab. Throws the jab to the pit that pushes Marquez back, and he's out of there. He doesn't stay in the strike zone very long with Marquez. Marquez don't move that much. There we go again. Marquez is feigning Bradley. Bradley's staying in a safe distance away. Throws the jab, shoulder rolls, and then he uh, comes with a piston right back. Shoulder rolls, and he's outside. Strikes to the pit again, outside and in, and he's outside. He doesn't stick around the strike zone like Pacquiao does. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Same thing. But the difference is... Mayweather is longer and has a longer reach, so he can stay pretty far away from Pacquiao. Notice their feet. Um, not Pacquiao, Marquez, sorry. Marquez goes into the strike zone, but Floyd is all covered up, defensively minded like Brandley. Just a little bit more advanced. So he's sneaking up on Pacquiao. Notice his feet, and then he goes inside of Pacquiao and strikes. Um, not Pacquiao, Marquez, sorry. Notice also Mayweather and Bradley, well Bradley was striking to the pit. That's the area that's unprotected in that, uh, in that stance that Marquez has. He left hook Marquez, he's quicker, longer, sharper. Floyd uses the lean forward and lean back approach so he can make distance with you. Here this time he does a pull counter and then he slips under Marquez. So this is uh, absolute disparity in skills here. 
and also in length. It's mostly length that's the problem here. Marcus is trying to find range. Floyd is way outside, and there he catches him with a jab to his face. So it's really a very disadvantageous for Marquez because Floyd is way outside. He's using the high guard to come in so he can't get countered. And then he uses the shoulder roll defense. And he inches up to Marquez. It's very, very difficult for Marquez to deal with that. Besides range and distance, he has to deal with length, the reach of Floyd Mayweather. See, there goes that jab way out there. Marquez can't counter that. Okay? With Timothy Bradley, it was the in and out action. He wasn't trying to stay in the strike zone. Floyd can actually hit him outside the strike zone. So that's an extra problem. Okay? But Bradley strikes. Notice the one area that Marquez does not protect with the high guard defense. Okay? So these are the differences. So let me just recount again. Pacquiao engaged too much, stays too long in the strike zone. So that's why he's a good dance partner for Marquez. Timothy Bradley was in and out. As he struck, he was out because he knew this was a counter puncher. Floyd Mayweather had longer reach. So he could actually be outside the strike zone and hit Marquez. And besides that, he had that great defense. So that when Marquez tries to throw some combinations, he's really just hitting arms and elbows. All right, so that's the breakdown there. Why this style that Marquez has has been so engaging with Pacquiao, whereas with Mayweather and Timothy Bradley, it was much more difficult for Marquez to actually use his style on them because he has limited motion and he's not that fast. And the other thing is the vulnerabilities in his defense, which are exploited by quicker, faster opponents. Okay, So that's basically it. You guys have a great day now.